Question of the Week from the Naked Scientists. Hello and welcome to Question of the Week from the Naked Scientists with me, Diana O'Carroll. This week, it's time to get all muddy in the garden in search of some tasty worms. This is Sarah from West Sussex. I pass a water meadow each day and during the winter I've been wondering how the worms cope when it is flooded for days at a time. How do they manage with conditions that range from underwater to baked dry when we have a hot summer? Many thanks. How do wriggly worms survive the wet weather? Hi, I'm Kevin Butt from the Earthworm Research Group at the University of Central Lancashire. OK, worms are quite amazing creatures, really. Unlike many other creatures, they obtain their oxygen through their moist skin. They don't have anything like lungs or gills, unlike other animals. This means they can get the oxygen they need from the air, which is the normal situation, but equally they can get their oxygen from water, because obviously water is H2O containing oxygen. So if the animal is underwater, if an earthworm is underwater, it can get oxygen just as easily as if it was in the air. And, you know, experiments have been undertaken keeping earthworms underwater for days on end, and they come to no harm. Some people think that if a worm's burrow gets flooded, then they would seek to escape. But as I've just mentioned, they don't need to because they can get the oxygen they need from the water. However, quite often we see earthworms on the soil surface or on pavements seemingly trying to escape from inundation of water. But perhaps it's not that, maybe it's something slightly different, that the animals are actually trying to make use of the moist conditions in order to move away from their burrows, if you like, to pastures new, so that they can mate with individuals that are not closely related to themselves. Not only do earthworms survive well under wet conditions, they can survive well under dry conditions in the soil, if it's really, really dry, And they do this perhaps by creating a spherical uh, chamber in the ground, lining it with their own mucus, curling up, almost tying themselves in a knot, and just sitting there and waiting for better conditions to come along. And many species of earthworm do this. Others, like the lobworm, the big worm that lives in Britain, burrow deeply down into the soil and just avoid the dry conditions near the surface. So a worm will happily swim about in the mud and even go on a little adventure across the footpath if it's raining. And according to our expert, when the soil freezes, they will dig down a metre or so. But if they do get stuck in the frozen layers, they will again form this hibernation chamber and sit out the cold. But let's venture back above soil now for next week's question. My name is Mike Mohali. I'm calling from uh, Pretoria in Sushanguve. We have a great-grandmother who... We are not sure exactly how old is she. And uh, according to the Home Affairs, they are saying she was born in 1902. So we strongly believe that uh, it's not the accurate age for our great-grandmother. So she needs us to help find someone who can establish exactly in which way she was born. Can you carbon date your grandmother? And no photocopy of romance jokes, please. Send your answers to chris at thenakedscientists.com or write them on the forum at thenakedscientists.com forward slash forum. Question of the Week is part of the Naked Scientists podcast and supported by the EPSRC, the Wellcome Trust and UK Fast. Look us up online at nakedscientists.com.